Anyone who has seen a Klingon likely is aware of the Klingon sword, the Batleth, the Sword of Honor. Some of my favourite videos from around the internet are those of people with expertise with swords and melee weapons attempting to understand the real world practicality of a Batleth, and most come to the conclusion that you could use it as a blade, but that's about it. It shouldn't be classified as a sword, and in terms of design it's rather odd. It looks cool though. They're not wrong, and the expanded and main Star Trek lore does also kind of address this once or twice. The thing is, the Klingons are a deeply stubborn and traditional people, and the blade is a part of their heritage. Forged from Barkanite in the era of spacefaring, the original was said to be created by Kalis the Unforgettable. It was said that he shaved a lock of his hair, took it to the Kristak volcano and plunged it into its molten rock then quenched the blade in Lake Lursa to forge it. So you try telling a Klingon that their greatest warrior messiah designed a crummy weapon and they're likely to run you through with said crummy weapon, probably while saying something like, seems to work to me. I like to interpret these stories of Kalos as parables, not literal events, but maybe ones inspired by truthful elements. For example, it could be that he did indeed forge a sword using molten iron ore harvested from a volcano, and quenched the blade in water collected from Lake Lursa, as making the trek from one location to the other with a red hot blade is… unlikely. My headcanon also tells me that perhaps in order to provide carbon for the steel, he infused it with his hair, which is 45% carbon. Again no proof, but hey, they're Klingon myths. The design of a Batleth is said to be based primarily around the martial art that taught its use, again a fighting style created by Kalis to teach his people, so it's possible that the fighting style evolved around the sword rather than the tool being an extension of the form lending some credence to it as, at first, seeming unwieldiness. As the Klingons prize themselves on their melee combat prowess, it could be seen that the succinct use of a Batleth in combat is a far more impressive feat than that of using a Disruptor or a Mechleth, items that the KDF officer also carries should the need arise. As their whole warrior cast revolves around winning honour in combat, Pride in using such a high-end weapon could be a motivating factor for its continual use. We see that assassins and the like are often issued with mechleth daggers, and there existed numerous other sword styles used by the Klingons, so its preference has to have a reason beyond practicality. Legend goes on to state a number of feats completed by Kalis with his new blade, most notably the slaying of the Serpent of Zol and Molar, the tyrant emperor of Kronos in early history. However, perhaps some more clues to its unique design can be found in Klingon myth, as he is said to have also used it as a tool. He carved a statue using it and harvested his father's fields. Looking at the curved nature of the blade, it does look rather scythe-like to me, and I have to wonder was it originally a farmer's tool that was adapted for a cheap means of defence. It wouldn't be the only weapon in history to have had this happen. In our real world, there are many martial arts that have evolved from mundane sources. Nanchaku, Tessen and the Teko are all said to have their origins as tools that were adapted into a fighting style and with the strong eastern inspiration present in Klingon creations, this could make a good parallel. The blade too has been pointed out at being better at defence than offence with its wide catch all convex curves, possibly weighted so in favour of protection that it comes at the cost of offence. And again this might be on purpose. In all my time watching Klingons, I've never once seen them use a shield. That would be an obvious choice for them, right? A, a race with such a focus on melee combat would surely have developed the idea of hiding behind a thing to stop a pointier thing from reaching you. Again, this is tied to the Klingon culture. They are a far more aggressive race than humanity and in battle it's common to be overcome by a bloodlust. No time for hiding when there's slaying to be done. Culturally this means that shields might have a stigma attached. 
Kalos' innovation in battle actually seems to be all focused around controlling that urge that the warrior race has. The Mokbara martial art is similar to Jiu Jitsu and practiced with a meditational tone to its movements, while Tom Paris once described a Batleth workout as both physically and mentally taxing, as it required a lot of concentration. By designing the weapon with defensive purposes in mind and teaching a more controlled fighting style, this could be why Kalis had such great success in defeating his enemy's armies. Whereas others succumbed to their aggressive instincts and threw caution to the wind in order to fell their opponent, Kalis' unique style and weapons allowed him to fight with his mind while warding and deflecting blows, all without the attached dishonour of cowering behind a shield. My conclusion, I guess, is an odd one. Yeah, the Sword of Honour is a strange choice for a melee weapon, neither truly a sword, axe or staff, and more of a mix of all three, without the dedicated strength of any. But the Klingons love them and will use them at any opportunity. I suspect that the weapon may have more humble beginnings than Klingon legend states before being adapted and tuned by Kalos. The spiritual dedication to the blade that it demands seems to be designed to temper the unwieldy into something controlled and deadly, much like the Klingon instinct for combat, and probably went a long way in securing the mythological figure's success. I'm not sure how much of this was intended by designer Dan Curry when he created the thing, but you can justify just about anything with sufficient world building. And that's why I love Star Trek. There's a saying. The blade of a Batleth always points to Stover Core, signifying the reverence the weapon holds in their culture for both the wielder and those slain by one. So they're not likely to put it aside anytime soon. Thanks for listening to my ramblings, but this is the sort of reasoning I've built up over time to explain the unorthodox but iconic Klingon blade. Thanks again, and until the next video I've been Rick, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.